Right, let's come back to the topic of the day. And of course, uh, we want to talk about leadership and delegation. And when we think of good leadership, thoughts of courage, resiliency, boldness, and determination come to mind. We think of the leader confidently in charge, steering the sheep and leading the men. What we often do not think of is delegation. The ability to wisely and effectively delegate is a quality for more quiet than others and yet one of the most crucial to a leader's success. Whether you're a manager at work, owner of your own business, or officer in the military, or simply working on a school project, effective delegation is one of the keys to achieving your goals. A leader who insists on maintaining all control and authority actually fails to even meet the definition of a leader. A leader does not do everything himself, rather he marshals all of these elements on the pathway to success. And of course, I'm holding court with deputy governors here. We're talking about leadership and delegation. And you can chime in as well. And the question that we're asking you this morning, do you think that the governors and the deputy governors have been having had a very effective working relationship? Right, you can hit us on Twitter, AM Live NTV is a Twitter handle, AM Live NTV is a profile name on Facebook, and 20505 is our SMS portal. So let's get your reactions there. So let's hear from uh, the, first, the first person that will walk up to the podium, who is uh, Abdi Hafid Abdul, Abdullahi Yaro, who is the Deputy Governor of Ojea County, founder of Abbas Ababsi and Associates, an audit and tax consulting firm in Nairobi, currently pursuing PhD in leadership and management at Management University of Africa. He holds a master or master's degree in a public policy from NG. P.S. This is from uh, uh, Tokyo. Also, he is a uh, uh, holder of BCom. Uh, this is Bachelor of Commerce from Kenyatta University. He's a certified public accountant and a member of ISPAC, which is an accounting body. You have five minutes, sir, uh, beginning now. Uh, thank you. Uh, John Quincy Adams said, if your actions inspires others, to dream more, learn more, do more, and become more, then you are a leader. Actually, he has somehow summarized the whole issue of leadership because leadership is about inspiring, influencing, and directing people. Many a times, people confuse leadership and management. Whereas management is necessary, leadership is essential. Whereas leadership is about inspiring, about influencing, without even uttering a word, management is more of commanding and directing. Therefore, there's a, different, there's a difference between a leader and a manager. There's also a difference between a leader and a politician. We have many politicians, but necessarily it doesn't mean that all politicians are leaders. In that statement of John Quincy Adams, he said, if your actions inspire more. He said, he didn't say just words, just your actions. Because in essence, what it means is that leaders lead by example. You need to lead by example. You need to act. You need to show people. You only need, you don't need just to talk. You need to act. By acting and doing what is required to be done, then you inspire other people what they should be or what they can do better. Leadership is about mentoring, about empowering, about coaching. You realize that in our current political systems, leaders try to trivial, trivialize or try, try uh, not to give chance to the people under them. And that's not leadership. Because leadership is you have to create that teamwork you have to ensure the people under you learn and they become, you have to create more leaders. You have to coach and make the people under you to become leaders also. But when you only think about yourself, when you only think that you are the leader, you are the only one who is supposed to maybe control, you stifle innovation, you discourage the people under you. You create a system 
where that everything relies on you, then you are not a leader. If we come to delegation, delegation is a matter of assigning, is the assigning responsibility and authority to specific persons, assign a specific task with responsibility and authority. If you give somebody work and you don't give that person the authority to do it, then it's not delegation. While maintaining the control yourself or the responsibility, but you assign the control and authority, you assign somebody else to do it. Delegation helps a lot and it is actually part of leadership. When a leader maintains that he is the one who to control everything, that he cannot delegate, and he feels that he can do everything to himself, that person does not befit even to be called a leader. Delegation helps in freeing time so that the leader can concentrate on his vision, on the overall control and direction. Delegation motivates the staff, motivates the employees, gives them uh, increases their morale because in a situation where the leader does not delegate then the employees become demotivated they become dissatisfied with their work and delegation also assists to save more time in doing many things but if we must rely only or we wait everything from the leader or a leader believes that he's the only one to do everything that he has failed in his leadership Therefore, it is uh, better or it is good for us to understand, uh, to, to understand leadership and to ensure we use, this, we use things like delegation for effective leadership. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Governor Abdullahi Yaro. Right up next, we're going to hear from His Excellency Gakuro Monyo. He's a, a Master of Commerce graduate in economic administration and financial management from University of Ajma, India, right? He's married and the father of a son and a daughter, young adults who are registered voters. Of course, he has interest in golfing, farming, and he's a staunch Christian as well. Biggest value in life is trust. Before joining politics, he worked in sales and marketing field for 20 years at Unilever Kenya, new KCC Trade Creations Limited, Never try the depth of a river with both feet. That is uh, his mantra. You have five minutes, sir. Let's hear from you. Thank you and uh, good morning, Kenya. Leadership is what determines what one is, as best told by people. Leadership needs one to have several traits, like you must be a good listener, you must be participatory in all issues that um, are handled under your domain. You must accommodate people, you must guide, and you must as well be a good manager. You cannot be a good reader if you're not a good manager. And in management, the belief is that you must deliver through people. If as a leader you believe that you're delivering yourself, or you're the one who knows everything, or the one who must guide everything, then you are ignorant of the fact that different people have different traits. Skills have to be utilized and utilized to the way one was trained to do. As a reader, you have people around you who have all different traits and you must utilize them optimally. As a leader, first and foremost, you must be an ardent and very good listener, that you create space for others and hear what they tell you. Then all you can do is add value to whatever propositions they would have. There are those leaders who think that talking too much is what we'd call leadership. That is politicking. And there's a clear difference between leadership and politicking. Talking and leading would go hand in hand if the talking is very constructive and looking at result-oriented talks. In management, delivering through people yields results. And it is said, if you want to walk far, walk with others. But if you want to walk fast, walk alone. You may run, you may jog, depending on your agility. So in leadership is walking that long journey with others to achieve the results. It happens that uh, most of the time leadership is confused uh, with power. 
power gets into people's heads and they think that since they are in power, now they are the greatest of the readers we can have. If you look at history, you'll see great readers like uh, Nelson Mandela, many years in uh, prison. But when he came out, he had no vengeance. He didn't have anything to do with those who had imprisoned him. He walked the journey to great success by accommodating everybody. What I would ask everybody who perceived all is a leader is that you must never have any vengeance against anyone. And you must never at any one time be vindictive to people. Ensure you're accommodating, ensure you listen to everyone, and ensure you give proper guidance. You might not know everything as a leader, but if you consult, you'll get the proper guidance. Consultation is key and fundamental to any leader. A leader who doesn't consult will only do what they think best. But everyone who consults will always have a better approach to issues. There's this uh, analogy that says that an older man sees farther than a youngster who's out, up a tree. And it's not that the vision, it's not taken as literally a vision, it's wisdom. And leadership has to have a lot of wisdom so that you get through. If you do consult as a leader, what you end up doing is that you get an extra idea and you utilize that idea and then you get to good results. Cases in point where you get challenges is when you find in the current devaluation setup that you find relationships are not working because people are not consulting. Earlier you heard my colleague say that, especially Jonathan Marcus said, he's working because they consult. Others will fail because they don't consult, they don't communicate, they don't talk. They only meet in circumstances that are unavoidable, public functions and all that. But my urge to good, uh, clear results of readership is that people must consult, work together, deliver through others, and also be guided by the biggest and most fundamental uh, attribute in life, which is trusting each other. Thank you very much. Thank you. Deputy Governor of Moranga, that he is Yakure. <coughs> and of course, he's given some silent points <coughs> on leadership and delegation, what we're talking about today. Up next, we have Deputy Governor of Nairobi County. This is Jonathan Mweke. He's actually touted to be the person and the brain shall be behind <coughs> the launch of the first ever mobile payment system, which is the EGG Pay. He holds a Master of Business Administration. This is MBA, Global Information and Entrepreneurship. Is also, he holds also a Bachelor of Arts in Computer Science and is going to speak to us on leadership and delegations. You have five minutes, sir. Good morning. Can you imagine an Nairobi that is safe, clean, and with little traffic? Where your kids can play outside without you worrying? where you leave Umoja at a time that you choose and get to town in 15 minutes. A Nairobi, where you turn on the tap and water comes out. Where when you fall sick, you go to the local clinic, get treated, and find medicine. And if you can't get to the hospital, you dial a number and a county ambulance comes for you. A Nairobi, where as soon as you learn a skill, you can find a job, or you can do some biashara. I don't imagine it. I actually lived it. Because in the early 80s, over 30 years ago, Nairobi used to be like that. But what happened in those 30 years? Because of bad leadership, Nairobi actually went downhill. And that's why I looked for this job. Because I believe, and I know with hard work, with commitment, with focus and good leadership, you can achieve anything. I decided to stop complaining on the sidelines and be the change that this city needed. Leadership is about commitment. Now, commitment means many things to different people. To the boxer, it's getting up one more time after getting knocked out. To the marathoner, is running that extra 10 kilometers when they're out of breath. To the soldier, it's going over that wall when they don't know what's waiting for them. To the missionary, it's saying bye to your own comfort to make life better for others. To the leader, though, it's all that and more because everybody you leave is depending on you. 
When Governor Kidero and I took over in 2013, Nairobi was ranked the second worst city in the world to live in. That means people say they'd rather live in Mogadishu than live in Nairobi. Today, as I stand here, the Economist magazine ranks Nairobi as the most, 10 most improved cities in the world to live. Just last month, Knight Frank reported that Nairobi is the only African city in the global investors top list. A few weeks ago, the JLL City Momentum Index ranked Nairobi as the most dynamic city in Africa and number 10 in the world ahead of cities like Dubai, Paris, and New York. We made this city safer by lighting it up at night. There are street lights all over. We opened hospitals and put medicines in them. We invested in garbage collection and made the city cleaner. We came up with a master plan that dictates how the city grows. We've computerized Nairobi, automated it to make sure that we serve you faster and better. That is how we have moved Nairobi from being the second worst city in the world to live in to a city where people want to come. John C. Maxwell said, you can measure a leader by the problem that he tackles. He only looks for one his own size. Nairobi had many problems. It will take more than five years to completely fix a city that was mismanaged for over 30 years. You have seen the progress we have made so far. Now you, the citizen, also needs to take leadership, go out and register to vote, and give us more time to start the journey that we began, which is to make Nairobi City go back to being the green city in the sun. Thank you, and have a good day. Thank you, Jonathan Mweke, the Deputy Governor of Nairobi. And of course, now they've raised uh, some issues that we need to also just drill deeper and focus on this morning. But also I can see a lot of reactions, uh, a rush of tweets that we uh, see coming through also, our Twitter handle. We have John Kidanga saying, working relationships between, or relationship between governor, governors and their deputies is frosty and antagonistic. Governors want to eat alone. We have Daniel Massey saying, I don't see any good working relationship between governors and deputies. Deputies are never had except for uh, Nairobi. Also, we have uh, Abdi Rahman Ali saying, the relationship between deputy governors and their boss or bosses is very shaky. I believe it's about power and lack of coordination. Also, we have uh, Patrick Wekesa saying, open up sewer lines and drainage systems now. <laughs> Uh, before heavy rains, uh, yeah, stop sleeping. Of course, this is just awakening uh, the leadership as well. Macho, Ma Machoka Dennis, governors squander county resources, making strange decisions without their deputy governors involved in decision making. And Ibrahim Rashid saying, I agree, but first a leader should mentor, coach, and articulate his vision to the team to pull together. Right, thank you for your tweets. And of course, uh, you know... The drill, you can hit us on Twitter, AM Live NTV is a Twitter handle, and AM Live NTV is a profile name on Facebook. Also, you can call in now and engage our deputy governors here as well. So, uh, we, you started with the de talking about delegation, and from your own standpoint, and also uh, from Abdi's standpoint as well, you feel frustrated that the relationship between your governor uh, and you is not that smooth. Let's begin with you, Gakonyo. Uh, yes, Gakure, sorry. It's, uh, it's quite frustrating because uh, I personally thought that uh, in uh, going to Moranga would be one of the best counties run in this. Uh, taking cognizance that uh, both the governor and I came from the private sector as renowned managers. And uh, to my thought, it was that it would be one of the shining counties. Mm -hmm. But however, we got to a point that I had no roles and responsibilities to hurdle. Yes. I remember one day I was handling a financial management meeting, as that is my trade. And midstream, uh, I started seeing uh, people walking out one by one because they were receiving SMSs and calls and being told, leave that meeting. He does not need to be involved in making proper financial management. And uh, at the end, the meeting never continued. And that is where I feel the rain started beating us because I was so clear in my mind that proper financial, proper and prudent financial management mm -hmm. was one of the results that would governize uh, Muranga to good results. Since then, uh, then issues on uh, 
financial management, I handled some in hotels, others at homes, and I felt extremely frustrated for that because I had a dream to see good results. Through. So they handle at home, you say? Yes, you'll find the governor calling staff to his house, uh, find him holding um, uh, meetings in the hotels. As, as at now, we've not had cabinet for, uh, I think now this must be the fifth, sixth month. There has no... We've not had cabinet meetings there since November. There has not been any cabinet meeting for yeah, six months down yes, the line. Yes. That's how dysfunctional we are. But how have you been expressing this frustration yourself? You know, I, uh, I, have, I have a governor who never says no to any suggestion. Anytime we meet, we we'll always agree, but uh, the minute we part ways, things do not happen as agreed. So it's very frustrating because you can never trust him. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, let's, let's hear from Abdi. Uh, uh, first of all, as he has said, mm -hmm. Uh, this uh, governors is like uh, they conspired uh, because maybe I think uh, in the Council of Governors they told each other that uh, you are the boss, you are the president, you are everything, so don't bother in consulting your deputies or any other people. So uh, the first year, most of the governors started well working together, apart from I think uh, it started with Machakos, but uh, we started working very well earlier. Then along the way, we realized that uh, mistrust arise. Mm -hmm. The government start mistrusting their deputies. Then, then this element of insecurity. Mm -hmm. And actually, what is bringing all these issues is insecurity and mistrust. Because uh, if you are a leader and you are confident of yourself, and uh, you really have a vision, and uh, you know that you can only attain your vision through people as a leader, yes. then uh, it is a mandatory upon you to be able to bring people closer. But uh, in essence, there's a possibility of collision along the way because you are working together. But that does not deter a leader from trying to reach out to, to his deputy or to other people. But uh, I came to realize that, first of all, uh, what I thought that we are together, we aren't together, I realized that the governor does not trust me. Mm -hmm. Because if he doesn't trust you, then it means there's very little you can do together. Well, wait a minute. You know, I, we don't really understand because the, the, the governor is the one who picked you up as a running mate, uh, isn't yes, it? Yes. So how come that now when you are in a working relationship, then he doesn't really trust you? It's, it's really very unfortunate because it's, I believe it's, it's in essence of insecurity and fear. Uh, what happens is that, for example, you are a politician. But it has been his considered view that, yes, if I pick this running mate, then I trust him, I think we can work together. Why should he be having bugbears and fears mm -hmm. that you're going to, you're, and, and being insecure? Because even in the process of even selecting or picking, it is not, it is not a decision that, uh, that I can really work with you. It is a matter of how can I get votes in the first uh, place. Yeah, <laughs> it was how can I get votes. Then so it's I, the numbers that you bring? That numbers you bring. Okay. Maybe if somebody looks at you, you are coming from a certain ethnic community, <coughs> then he thinks that you can bring votes. Mm -hmm. It's not something that maybe you are living, you, that you have to share ideals, All right. the same thing. And for, for my case, actually, it's very interesting because I actually came into this thing 50 days to election. I came, my, the governor has been campaigning for like two years, but me, I came. I was speaking as a running mate, 50 days to election. All right, but so it's very little that I even know about the governor himself, his personality and those things. So uh, you want to tell me you and the governor, uh, yeah. you it, you don't have any close relationship this before? Is, yeah. So yes. this has just been a, a, a marriage of convenience. Exactly, it's just a marriage of convenience. <laughs> okay, we yeah. didn't this, have this is very interesting. Yeah, we didn't have much. All right, there was no relationship. You know, where you have maybe you know this person, you are talking. We are. Uh, incidentally, we are coincidentally we are we are we are in the same profession. He's an accountant, and I'm also an accountant. <laughs> but we never knew each other before. All right, let, let's say from uh, uh, Jonathan, yours flies in the face of what we're hearing. Yours is a, is a good, harmonious working relationship with Governor Ivan Skidero. Yeah, um, I mean, <coughs> you know, the devolution is the best promise that this this country will ever get. Yes. And I'm shocked by what I'm hearing uh, about, about some of my colleagues, what's happening in their counties. Um, I think, Debal, it all starts with ground rules. You know, before you had us go and stand up there and uh, talk about leadership and delegation, you yes. gave us some ground rules. This is how much time you have. Yes. This is what we are going to do. And we follow the ground rules, and that's why the show is functional. Mm -hmm. um, 
and it should be the same thing in, in, in any leadership position in any organization. For us in Nairobi, we start with the ground rules. Why are we here? And we both agreed with the governor of Nairobi, listen, we are both bought, born and brought up in the city. We love this city. We recognize that this city has 42 different communities living together. And we agreed that our job is to ensure that we provide services, build infrastructure, and ensure that all these 42 different communities live together equally with no fear or favor. And those are the things that bind us. So that when these other problems come up, and in any organization there's problems, there's some areas where the governor and myself think differently about some things, but we come back to the ground rules and we say, listen, it's not about what we want. It's not about what the governor wants or the deputy governor wants. What do the people need? And once you get those ground rules, then things begin to work. Uh, but it's also very important on how the governor uh, carries himself out. Uh, I wouldn't say herself because there are no lady governors, but himself out because uh, they are the ultimate leader. Because in any organization, you can only have one leader. Uh, but leaders can't work alone. Leaders, like you've heard today, work through others. And for you to work through others, you have to motivate mm -hmm. them, you have to inspire them, you have to build trust in them, and you have to be able to rally them to do what you want them to do. Thank you. Now, if you decide to go and be an island by yourself and treat uh, the people who are supposed to be doing your work for you or making things work for you, then you have a dysfunctional county, and I can promise you, you won't see any progress. Right. We have a, a lot of callers hanging on the line right now who want also to chime in on this particular conversation. We have Sifuna hanging on the line. Good morning, Sifuna. Uh, hello, hello. Good morning, Dibal. Good morning to you. You have a question? Yeah, or a this question? is uh, Sifuna calling from Nairobi. Yes. I, I wish uh, to quickly say that... Uh, there, there, there is a good, uh, a good uh, service delivery when uh, the governor and his deputy are working in, uh, in, in liaison and uh, in good communication, and they are actually focused on service delivery of the people. I, wa I want to commend uh, the governor of Nairobi, Banakidero, because yes. in most functions I've been uh, here and there in this city, I have met him uh, having delegated full responsibility to Banamweke. And he has executed that in a uh, in, in good uh, uh, mandate and good faith. However, the problem is uh, some of these deputy governors are very um, sly and uh, very, they can be very technical people. You know, five years to learn from your boss is enough. Mm -hmm. and, and you realize that the, the ball in some counties where the, the governor and his deputy have worked in very good unison. Yes. A lot of corruption has also taken place in such counties. So for us, one energy, we even, we even feel, feel okay when the governor, the deputy governor, and even the senator are, are in, a, in, a, in a disagreement because now they put checks and balances. Thank you. But what you see, a case like uh, Kidero and, and Mweke, uh, bringing from the same, calling themselves brothers, you... All right, we seem to have lost your uh, phone. We have Daniel hanging on the line. Good morning, Daniel. So, uh, to ask one energy, All right. the deputy governor... Okay, let's just have Daniel hanging on the line. We seem to be having a problem with the Otoasi phone, but we've gotten the gist of his morning. comment. Right. Good morning, Daniel. Good morning, Daniel. Hello, morning. Morning. We can hear you. Go on. Ask uh, your question or your, your yes, contribution. Morning. Yes. Hello, morning. Morning. We can hear you. Go on with your contribution or question, please. All right. We seem to be having a problem with yes, Daniel as well. Me. Yes, please. We can hear you. Just kindly switch off uh, or switch off. Uh, try to tone down on the volume of uh, your television, please. Hello? 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 All right. Hello? Well, can we, let's just take the next caller. All right. All right. Let's just also answer the questions that uh, 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 Otto was actually asking. But before I even go there, we have also comments uh, from our Twitter handle. We have Brian Robert saying, uh, good speech. Nairobi County has really changed since... Uh, uh, Mweke and Kidero took over. I was born in Nairobi and there is change. Uh, Brian Robert says also we have uh, Ibrahim Rashid saying delegation comes first. Fatuma, uh, Kin Fatuma Kinsey, the selection criteria of the deputy governor by the governors are not based on long-term working relationship. She says we also have Nelson Namonua. But still, a lot more has to be done in terms of uh, this should be garbage uh, collection and sewer drainage system. I don't know this is addressing to whom? Is it Nairobi or Wajir or also Muranga as well? And then we have also Fatou Mackenzie saying thank you, Deputy Governor of Wajir. It's all about votes, not working relationships and professionalism. Right. Could we respond to what Otoa is saying? Yeah. 
Uh, let's hear from, of course, glowing comments for you. Uh, good working relationship with uh, Governor Kidero as well. But we want also to go to the core of the problem because we saw Hazel just uh, last week also defecting to Jubilee uh, from COD, of, uh, from ODM, and she expressed her frustrations as well. I think we have that particular clip we can hear from her, and uh, we wonder, this has been happening all along. So why are people defecting now, right? If we have it. The current governor does respect my decision. It's not about, uh, it's not a competition. It's about me wanting to move on. I have been a deputy governor. I've seen what that has done for me. I have said, let them respect my decision. Nobody pushed me. I actually came out and said, I want to be the senator in 2017. Ezel Katana there, deputy governor of Mombasa. So the governor does not respect some of the decisions that you make. Is that what you've been experiencing yourself? Yes, that, uh, that's a true picture, and uh, that's how the scenarios are. And uh, like the case for Hazel, I think of, of the eight, nine lady deputy governors, uh, the case has been a little different because uh, they can always cry wolf that uh, the girl child is being uh, frustrated. For us, uh, gentlemen, it's a little different that almost gets physical because uh, when you make up a suggestion and it is not uh, taken up, you give a brilliant idea that can be run, but since it's coming from you, it's perceived that it's Straight not, uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's not uh, his piece of cake. And we get thoroughly frustrated. And for those of us who are a little weak, they have really gone through three and a half years of serious, serious frustrations. And we had to stand up by our own spines and say, I am here for the people. And for the people I stand. The biggest problem that happens to these governors is that they have people around them who misdirect them. And that is why you say, my governor doesn't know how to tell me no as an answer. So we will always agree on everything. But when he goes and consults people, I don't know what gets into his head. And things change. All right. Is it, is it a problem that we're having in the Constitution? Because as it is in the Constitution, there seem to be a gray <coughs> area of the duties that a deputy governor should be having. Right, and I don't know. Uh, do you have a forum as well? I understand you have a forum of a deputy governor yes, here. Do. Is this something that you've also tried to front? That yes, we should be maybe having an amendment to the constitution so that also the the the, the duties of a deputy governor are well stipulated, uh, other than you know what is put there. Yeah, in the event that we do not have a, have a governor, then the deputy governors uh, they take over. Abdi. Uh, yeah, actually, there's a problem. I don't I don't actually call it a problem in the constitution because. Uh, the constitution says that the deputy governor is the second in command, is the second chief executive. Is uh, it doesn't give any. It, it's to deputize, His role is to deputize the governor. It doesn't specify exactly what you are supposed to do. But I blame it on the ineptitude of the leaders because uh, the constitution cannot write everything. It cannot. You know. You cannot. You cannot stipulate everything in a paper. It is supposed to be, in, in the, I think in the legal ja jargons, there's something they call the spirit of the constitution. Mm -hmm. There's something called the letter and the spirit of the All constitution. constitution yes. The spirit of the constitution is that the person should interpret it nicely. Mm -hmm. if, for example, the constitution says that the deputy governor is to deputize the governor. Yes. Then the governor is supposed to know that. What is the role or what is the work of my deputy? Mm -hmm. is to deputize me. So he should be able to delegate. He should be able to work with him. He should be able to consult. That's what it means. Mm -hmm. But if the governor says, because the constitution does not specify any role to the deputy governor, I therefore will not delegate any of my work to him, then it becomes a problem. So I blame the ineptitude of the leaders, ineptitude of the governors. It's not, it's not, something, to do with, it's not something to do with the constitution. Is it something because to do we cannot write everything in the constitution. Mm -hmm. We cannot say the, the deputy governor must do this, must do this, A, B, C, D. It, I, I don't think it's necessary to, to me because in, every, in, every, in all over the world, even the deputy president, it doesn't say that the deputy president must do A, A B, C, D. It just says he deputizes the president. Mm -hmm. That's what it says. But they are working together very well because they have been friends for a long time and they are able to work together. 
Likewise, in many countries are like that. You can, you can, you must have heard of the, of the issue of the the vice president of America, Biden and uh, Obama. They have been very working very well together. You, you, you know the Nelson Mandela when he was the president, he even had the guts to make an opposition leader, an acting president. I don't know whether you have heard about that. Mm -hmm. One time he made a, a Butele, the Mongus, what is he called? The Inkata Freedom yes. Party leader, Butelezi, as the acting president. Thank you. But can everybody do that? That's what matters. Yeah, good question. As we're winding up also, uh, uh, what lessons then can we pick from Nam Nairobi County? Because it seems a, the, there is this stunning performance that is happening in terms of working relationship. And uh, we want to know what is happening in Nairobi that is not happening in Muranga or happening in Wajia, right? First of all, is do you, how, do you, how would you merit also the leadership of Kidero in terms of working relationship with Kidero yourself? Yeah, I mean, uh, like I said here before, leadership, and that's why I quoted John C. Maxwell, uh, leadership is about problem solving, yeah? And a leader is measured by the size of problems that they can tackle. So, you know, when we are talking about my colleague Hazel in Mombasa, she ran into problems with her governor and she's walked out and even changed parties. Um, you don't lead by running away from problems. The problems remain. Uh, and if you want to see progress, there's always going to be problems, first of all. If you want to see progress, you look at this year, did you have the same problem you had last year? If you had the same problem, then there's something wrong. But if you have a different problem, then you know you're leading. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so we shouldn't run away from our problems. Uh, I mentioned that uh, the governor is able to communicate uh, because since leaders work through others, I think it's something we've agreed on here today, uh, you must know what the leader wants. You must know what the leader stands for. Mm -hmm. uh, you must know uh, what the leader's vision is. If you don't know, then you can't execute the leader's vision. Thank you. Uh, and so Dr. Kidero, we are able to sit down, we are able to consult. He's able to tell me, listen, this is what I stand for. This is what I want. This is what I need to get done. We agree and then we execute. Uh, and we share several values on, on leadership itself. Okay. I'll give you uh, 30 seconds each of you, but, but you have to respond to this particular uh, tweet that is coming from mm -hmm. Sam Akwale, who's asking or is saying global rankings are good, but can Deputy Governor Mweke comment on streets clogged by stationary empty matatus? Stationary empty matatus. Yes, yes I can comment on that. It's work in progress. Uh, I say that you can't fix everything in five years, but you make some progress. The progress we've made on the streets being clogged is that we have now almost completed seven new bus terminals that are outside <coughs> of the city. Mm -hmm. We have Ngara Road, we have Moranga Road, we have Desai Road, we have Park Road, yes. we have Pangani, we have Country Bus Station, and we have Railway Station. Uh, they are, most of them are 90, some of them are substantially done, mm -hmm. and so we will be moving these stationary matatus out into bus terminals so that they're not parking on the streets, but they're waiting for passengers inside the bus terminals. Mm -hmm. So these are some of the things that I was saying, give us some more time and we'll continue doing things that make Nairobi move forward because it's a process. It's a yeah? process. Uh, on the global rankings, global rankings are very, very important. And why I talked about the global rankings is what we have seen. You've seen Nairobi just last year host 39 presidents. Now, 39 presidents would not come to somewhere at the same time where traffic is not flowing, where there's a security risk where a coup is about to happen, where a city is dirty. These are indicators that something is happening. Thank and you. these guys who do uh, global rankings, they rank based on things. They rank based on what is your safety situation. I talked about streetlights. What is your cleanliness and hygiene? I talked right. about how we clean the city. Thank you. Thank and you. many, many other things. So global rankings are important. Uh, just let me comment on uh, Wafula uh, for one second, who yeah, said that... 30 seconds. We if, have some yes, list just 30 time. seconds, yes. Wafula said that if people work together, then it's a breed of corruption. I tend to disagree with him. In Nairobi, we've gotten rid of more than 300 people who've copped being corrupt. Just this year, we got rid of more than 15 people who are in our parking slots in the Stoll area. How you do that is by working together because the governor and myself sit down and agree that we don't want this vice. If you don't work together, Thank then you. the governor has his people, I have my people, you can't get rid of them, and that's when corruption thrives. Thank you. Your 30 seconds, uh, Gakure, as you're winding up. Uh, let me say this, the constitution just bars a deputy governor from hiring and uh, firing of staff. But uh, as the, the vice chairman of the deputy governor's forum, we had an effort of getting two bills to the Senate mm -hmm. that we wanted uh, two things to be incorporated. Uh, one is how can a deputy governor be 
uh, impeached because uh, there are no provisions in the Constitution, and two, what should be the roles and responsibility. Those two bills never came to fruition because we feel that um, most of the senators want to be governors, and so they wouldn't want to have Thank very you. strong deputies. Thank you. And that is why we failed in achieving. Thank you. 30 seconds. Uh, okay, my appeal is just uh, for us, for Kenyans to change, for leaders to change. We must understand that, uh, that uh, running a government is bigger than an individual. We must understand that county or country is bigger than an individual. And therefore, we should always try to reach out to people. As a leader, you must reach out to the people because at the end of the day, responsibility lies on you. Because if the county fails, you are the one to blame at the end of the day. Thank so you. it's better for the governors or for any leader to reach out to the people, try to work through people and uh, try to always get an agreement so that uh, things can move. Thank, Thank you. you.